All right, our next queen to come to the stage, she is from Michigan. Please put your hands up right now for Julia Seneff. <laughs> So I'm technically too old to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I've been feeling myself lately. Yeah, I said it. I've been getting high on my own supply. But if you don't know me, this is not the baseline, okay? It's been years of battling crippling depression, anxiety, self-esteem stuff. But right now, things are pretty good, yeah. I'm in a great relationship. The only self-harm I'm engaging in involves cutting up avocados. See said ring finger. And I've recently discovered the lottery. Yeah. You guys know about this? So I discovered the lottery back in November when Powerball went up to $2 billion, which is insane. And the winning ticket was sold at my gas station, 0.3 miles from my house. Somebody's walking around my neighborhood now, $2 billion jangling in their pocket. It's a lot of cash. Now everyone in Altadena feels like they could win something at any moment, right? Yeah, we're so close. They basically won, billionaire adjacent. But Powerball's a draw game, right? It, they call out numbers, you check your ticket, it's over in a flash. And I'm looking for more ways to avoid work. So I found that scratchers are a better fit for my lifestyle. Now, I try to be responsible just by the $1 scratchers, be, be on a budget, an adult. But once in a while, usually on Fridays, I'll treat myself to this $5 scratcher called Hot Poker Nights. <laughs> And when you win one of these things, the highs are very high, you guys. And I'll take like 40 minutes to scratch this thing. Like, really just get lost in it. Sit down at my kitchen table, get out my lucky scratching wrench. I found it in a junk drawer. Light a candle. Envision myself living in a house with more than one tiny airplane-sized bathroom. It's, it's gotten to the point where my boyfriend has to set a time limit, other, otherwise the entire day's shot. Oh, the other great thing about scratchers is if you don't win, you can scan them into this thing, enter them, them into a second chance drawing. The ways to win are endless, guys. We've all been sleeping on this lottery thing. So yeah, the universe is kind of aligning for me right now. I guess the only thing that's a bit of a bummer is that I've recently started pissing my pants. Yeah, real talk. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Woman of a certain age probably has kids, right? Nothing to be too ashamed of. Don't be too hard on yourself. Here's the thing, guys. No kids, just piss. Yeah. It happened a couple weeks ago. I'm out there walking my dog, Frankie, just walking, walking. I sneeze. And then along with the sneeze, pee comes out. Like a thimble full of pee. It's out of nowhere. And then last week, walking her again, walking, walking, Pee comes out, no sneeze, no combination sneeze, then pee, just pee, just pee. And it really felt like the beginning of the end, you know, like this is it, hide me away from society. I expect a van's gonna pull up, I get into it. They take me out to the desert with all the other people pissing their pants at Morongo. So now I can add incontinent to my resume. But you never know what people are looking for in this job market. <laughs> Honestly, I blame my dog. She's the one needing these walks, you know? She's peeing, I'm peeing, it's a, uh, whatever, psychosomatic. I don't know what the word is. But 
She and I have a very complicated relationship. We've been together. Oh, her name's Frankie, by the way, just in case you were wondering. Full name, Frankie Judy. We have a complicated relationship. We've been together about 10 years. And in that time, we've made almost zero progress. She's one of those dogs who's very in her head, very frazzled, very wedding planner who's lost her clipboard energy. She needs constant validation. She won't start eating her kibble until I literally start clapping for her. I'm not kidding. My boyfriend can tell you. She follows me everywhere. She's very codependent, which is not the same thing as love. She sits directly under my chair all day. While I'm working, I forget about her. I get up for a scratch or break. I step on her. She screams. She screams. Then I get mad at her for putting herself in this situation. Then I feel bad, I get mad, I have to console her. This is literally doggy Munchausen, okay? And color me impressed. The average dog is not pulling off these kinds of sick mind games, you guys. All my friends are having kids now, and it's very awkward for me. Because if I want to hang out with them, I either have to participate in this very detailed kid combo, or just sit there like a weird ghost. <laughs> and then if I'm participating, I'm trying a little too hard, trying to be cool, saying stuff like, you're really thinking about Montessori for Skywalker? Because my friend's kid oatmeal goes to the one in Burbank, and apparently the principal forgot to BCC everyone on this last email. It seems a little disorganized over there, okay? No, that's weird. You're not allowed to be interested in other people's children's lives if you're not a parent yourself. I'm not trying to get arrested. So now I just say I have a kid, right? It's easier. Her name's Frankie, she's 10. She scoots her ass across the carpet, pisses outside all day. No one's asking us for a play date, and that's that, and I keep drinking. Thank you.